Hi, my name is Annie, and when I was two years old, I had my first grandma seizure. Because I continued having seizures after that, I was diagnosed with epilepsy. Today, I will be debunking or confirming the most common myths about epilepsy. Disclaimer, I am not a medical professional. I am commenting on these myths based on my own experience of living a life with epilepsy. With that said, let's get started. Myth number one, you will swallow your tongue during a seizure. That's physically impossible. Your tongue is connected to the bottom of your mouth. There's no way that's going to go down your throat. Myth number two, if someone is having a seizure, you should put something into their mouth to prevent them from choking. No, don't put something in their mouth. That's not safe. You could chip their teeth or whatever object you have put in their mouth could suffocate them. The other problem is if the object is able to break, they could inadvertently swallow that object and choke on that instead. What you should do if someone is having a seizure is move objects away from the individual that will protect their head and any other body parts from, let's say, a sharp edge of a table. Next, you would start timing their seizure. If their seizure has lasted longer than two minutes, you should call 911. Turn them on their side and monitor their breathing because they could stop breathing. It won't be because of their tongue. They could just stop breathing because they have no control over their body. Once you call 911, stay with the person until paramedics arrive and can take over. If the person wakes up before the paramedics arrive, let them know that an ambulance is on their way and that person can make the decision if they want to go to the hospital or not at that point. Myth number three, you should restrain someone having a seizure. This is why I personally don't like being touched because of this mistake that people have made. What happens when people turn you on your side is instead of monitoring your breathing, they want to hold your body in place, but that's not a good thing because you could pull their muscle or you could accidentally, let's say, dislocate their shoulder. So don't restrain the person, just do what was recommended in the last myth. Myth number four, epilepsy is contagious. No. Where did this even come from? Epilepsy is not contagious. It is not a virus. It is not a bacterial infection. There's no way I can walk into a room and cough all over the place and give you epilepsy. I might give you the flu. I might give you the common cold, but there is no way that I will give you epilepsy. It is a seizure disorder that some people are born with or due to a brain traumatic incident develop a seizure disorder. Myth number five, during a seizure the person is in pain. That is not true. I never remember my seizures because I am unconscious. I will say from my personal experience, everyone has a different experience when it comes to their epilepsy disorder. For me, it is painful leading up to the seizure. Mine are triggered by a high fever. When I had my first grandma seizure, it lasted 20 minutes. And as I continued having seizures, over time I learned that this is what a seizure feels like. Is one, I'm already super sick, I don't feel good, I have a fever. And then it's really hard to focus and concentrate on things. What starts to happen over time is I start having the worst migraine you can ever imagine. And gradually my vision gets worse and worse and worse until I can't see anything. I learned as a child what my symptoms were building up to a seizure to the point where I could go and tell an adult I'm having a seizure and find a safe place to lay down. So for me, the wake up never hurt, but for some people it can hurt because maybe you hit your head or you pulled a muscle while having your seizure. It depends on the circumstance. What I remember being the worst part about a seizure is not only the buildup, is the wake up. Just imagine how terrifying it is for a seven year old to wake up and there's wires all over your chest and 
at the time, they must have been performing an EEG. An EEG is a test that allows the doctors to visualize when you're having your seizures and under what circumstances. What they do is they separate your hair and they get as close as they can to the scalp and they glue the wires there and they put it all over your head. I used to call it the Medusa hair. Waking up to that is the most terrifying experience that I've ever had in my life. Thankfully, seizures don't hurt during the situation because you're unconscious, but unfortunately the before and the after can be very traumatic. Myth number six, people with epilepsy are mentally ill or intellectually developmentally disabled. Sometimes you can form disabilities, but that does not mean that you are stupid. It does not mean that you are insane like the medical community used to think back in the days. I've ran into this problem both in an educational environment and a medical environment. As a child, I always knew what teachers were excited to have me despite my communication disorder and a learning disability. A communication disorder is if someone was sitting next to me and were listening to the same conversation, they might be hearing something different than what I'm hearing. And with the learning disability, that stemmed off of the communication disorder, but it didn't mean that I couldn't learn. It just meant that I took longer. The teachers who didn't understand that, I always knew because they would put me at my own desk away from the rest of the class. One time I asked one of my teachers, why can't I be with the kids over there? And they said, because you'll slow everyone down. Just stay over there and be quiet. So that's what I did. It did mean that my parents had to work hard if I desired to learn, but they wanted to. How I have ran into this problem in the medical field is my doctor thought the only reason why I was doing so well in school was because my parents were pushing me too hard. So one day he was lecturing my parents about that and my mom snapped at him, which she had every right to. She said, she wants to learn to read, so what am I supposed to do? Tell her no? I don't care if we have to restart every time she has a seizure. I don't care if it takes a lifetime to teach her or three hours just to get through one book. She wants to learn to read. I wish this stigma wasn't an issue. It makes it so you don't want to tell people that you have epilepsy because the second some people learn that you have epilepsy, they discredit everything you've said before and from then on. Myth number seven, people with epilepsy are disabled and not able to work. That is not true. You are able to work, especially if your seizures are well managed due to your treatment plan with your doctor. You should communicate to your boss that you have epilepsy, but to assure them that it shouldn't conflict with me being able to do my job. And if you give me a chance, I promise you won't regret it. Because I've always said that to my bosses during the interview, I personally have never been discriminated against, but I know it does happen because there's that stigma and fear around epilepsy. If you feel like you can work, go ahead and work. Go find a job that you really like. Myth number eight, people with epilepsy shouldn't have jobs with responsibility and stress. Once again, I think this depends on the individual. I wouldn't say to that extreme, I can work in a stressful environment just as well as any other individual. Being a CNA in a med tech for three years is a very stressful job. You have to think quick on your feet. You have to be willing and able to deal with emergency situations that did occur. And I was able to handle it. I think if you have the confidence to work and you feel like you can handle what the job requires, go ahead and work. Myth number nine, if you have a seizure, you have epilepsy. That is not true. Epilepsy is a seizure disorder. I do know that people can have a seizure because they get super sick. They overdose on medication or they drink too much alcohol. There might be other reasons. The difference between someone who has a seizure due to this 
from someone who is diagnosed with epilepsy is the person is monitored for 24 hours and there is no other signs of seizure activity. For someone who has epilepsy, within that 24 hour period, they are still observing seizures when an EEG and an MRI are being performed. There are findings of seizure activity outside of medical treatment. When I had my first seizure, I was in the hospital for a week in a coma, and during that time, they still observed seizure activity every hour to every day until my neurologist found a treatment plan that managed my seizures. Once I was on the medication and not displaying seizures as often, it still showed on my EEG that I was having seizure activity. So I was forever diagnosed with epilepsy. But someone who just has a seizure but doesn't display any seizure activity on an EEG or any abnormality on an MRI or CAT scan, and after 24 hours of observation, they don't have any more seizures. It is just documented that because of this, they had a seizure. Myth number 10, all seizures involve convulsions. It depends on the individual. For me, it does involve convulsions, but for someone else, some people, it's small seizures where they're just staring blankly into space and when you try to get their attention, you can't get it. Another sign is more like a tick, and when you try to get their attention by saying their name, they don't respond. Myth number 11, video games or strobe lights will trigger seizures. Once again, I think this myth is it depends on the person. For me, it could. It's a possibility. How they determine that is during an EEG, they'll do three different tests, or at least they did on me. They wanted to see if I was having seizures while awake and just doing a regular life. They wanted to see if I would have a seizure due to flashing lights. And then they wanted to see if I was having seizures while sleeping. Prepping for this test is the worst thing ever. You have to eat dinner because you have to take your medication, but you can't have any sugar. You can't have any more after dinner. Then all night you have to stay awake because you're going to have wires on your chest and you're going to have the Medusa hair and they want you to be able to sleep despite that. Once you arrive at the hospital after being sleep deprived all night, the first part of the EEG, once they have all the wires connected to your head, is just laying there, staying awake, and then at some point they'll instruct you to close your eyes and they'll do lots of flashing in your face. And then after that test, they'll say, okay, now you can go to sleep and just sleep like you normally would as long as you want. Because you are so tired, you just sleep like you normally would during the night. Once again, depends on the person. Not everyone is triggered by flashing lights. And especially if you're taking your medicine or whatever treatment plan your doctor has put into place, you can do those kind of activities. Myth number 12, epilepsy treatments don't work. That is not true. My advice would be listen to your neurologist, do what they say. If you feel like you should have a different treatment plan that this one isn't working for you, don't just stop. Keep taking the medicine that has been prescribed to you and communicate with your doctor. They will perform EEGs, they will perform an MRI if necessary, and then it will be determined if you should still have a treatment plan or not. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to communicate to them. Because a good doctor will say, huh, I don't know. Let's look at that together. I have a really good neurologist now. My neurologist when I was a child was very smart. He found a treatment plan that managed my seizures, but he didn't have the greatest bedside manners. But my new neurologist is really such a great doctor. She listens to my questions. She doesn't get annoyed with them. She goes above and beyond to help me understand the best treatment to give me a normal life. I'm able to drive, I'm able to work, and I'm able to be a stay-at-home mom with no concern of having a seizure. It is possible to live a good, healthy life as long as you listen to your doctor. Myth number 13, you can't die from epilepsy. That is not true, unfortunately. I wouldn't call being diagnosed with epilepsy a death sentence, but it is possible. It is why when someone is having a seizure, you should monitor their breathing because they could stop breathing. Recently, there was that actor, Cameron, who plays Carlos in Descendants, who while he was sleeping had a seizure and he died. 
it is an unfortunate result, but it is avoidable if you have help at the time. And hopefully your treatment plan is going according to plan, but I will say it's not always 100% certain. Even though I'm taking my medication and doing what my doctor advises, there is still a possibility that I could have a seizure. Because of my seizure making me unconscious, I make sure that I always have that medical card with me so that in some way I can communicate my needs as someone with epilepsy. What myth I'm surprised isn't on here that I heard in my life is that you shouldn't have children. When I was 18 years old, my doctor basically gave me the sex talk. He went on and on about how I shouldn't get pregnant and if I do, it could be really dangerous. I could die, the child could die, or we could both die. He also talked about how there's a possibility that I could pass on epilepsy to my children, which is not true. It could be a family history and it could be passed on through their genes, but they themselves are not 100% guaranteed to have epilepsy. Because of that conversation, when my husband and I decided to have kids, it took a year and a half, not because I couldn't get pregnant, because I wanted to make sure that it was safe. That's when I found my new neurologist and she gave me a couple theories of why he would say that. There is a possibility that when you're in labor and you have a seizure, the baby could get stuck in the birth canal and they would have to perform an emergency section. But our medicine is so advanced that that wouldn't be a huge concern. The other theory was is if I had a seizure and I fall, I could seriously injure me and the baby. But she felt like that didn't apply to me as a concern because I haven't had a seizure since I was seven years old. The biggest difference I would say between someone who is pregnant without epilepsy and me is instead of one doctor, an OBGYN, I had two that had to work together. I had a neurologist that made sure my levels for my medication were good and if they started getting too low, she would up my dose. But my medication, Lamotrigin, is a 1% chance of birth defects. So upping the dose is not considered a negative because my child getting birth defects is a lower risk than me having a seizure. And then my OBGYN communicates with the neurologist, but her main focus is making sure that during my pregnancy, I am healthy and that at the end, I have a healthy baby. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you learn about epilepsy. Bye.